They're very bright, super vibrant. They look so good. Hey everyone, Digital David here. Today in this video, I'm gonna be checking out the Cooler Master Hyper 622 Halo White. I did receive this product directly from Cooler Master, but I want you to know that any opinion expressed in this video is strictly my own. That being said, if you're interested in this cooler or you wanna find out more about it, the link to it will be in the video description. Here's a peek at the retail box and packaging. Everything looks great. You'll see we have our dual tower heat sink, which is really cool. On the back, we have some additional tech specs. Then we have all of our specs right here. If you're wondering about sockets, this supports AMD, AM4, or AM5, and the latest and greatest from Intel, LGA1700, as well as the previous socket, LGA1200, and some additional options there for you. Six heat pipes that are nickel plated, and we have intuitive ARGB detection, so I'm excited to try that out. Now let's go ahead, let's open this up and see what's inside. Here are all the contents. First up, we have our product literature consisting of our two year warranty information and our user guide and manual. You'll see it's the exact same regardless of the color, black or white. Here's our Intel and AMD installation instructions, additional info on the back, and we have our wiring and cable hookup diagram right there. Next, you'll see we have our hardware kit here with all of the brackets, screws, and everything that we need. We also have the Cooler Master CryoFuse thermal paste. We also have adapters here for our fans. And then lastly, you'll see the cooler itself with its dual tower design in our two Halo 120 RGB ARGB fans. Cooler Master's logo and branding. Beautiful white fit and finish on this. Looks really nice. This is a pretty massive cooler. You'll see we need to peel that off before use. You can count the six heat pipes, all of our fan power cable connectors right there for us as well. Now let's go ahead, let's get this installed. All right, take a look. We have our cooler installed. Everything looks great. Really happy with the Halo fans as they're spun up and illuminated. With our RAM here, you can see that fan is gonna come out and block your slots there. So make sure your RAM is low profile enough or you're gonna have to reposition the fan maybe on the other side. That will just depend on your particular build, but everything's looking great. Now let's go ahead, let's sample the RGB. All right, so we're gonna cycle through the different RGB presets right here. The rainbow ones are gonna be my favorite because I just love seeing all the different colors illuminated. Having a white case like this is great too. It just really helps with the diffusion and the glow but they're very bright, super vibrant. They look so good, whether it's, you know, looking straight at it from the top or off to the side. Beautiful fan blades, fast, responsive. Depending on how you have everything built, you can either use a dedicated button like we're doing to control them, or you could set them up within your specific RGB software like Master Plus from Cooler Master. This one's kind of mesmerizing watch it spin and glow and cycle through. Really rich colors though. Some of my favorite RGB is always from Cooler Master products. Bright blue. Look at that. Gotta put some sunglasses on. Gotta show the Cooler Master purple, you know. Love the white too, kind of that ice white build. And then we're back to our rainbow presets so you can see all of the color. All right, now the moment you've all been waiting for, let's see how this cooler performs. So currently we have all the panels on, everything's just at an idle. We've started up our PC and we're just monitoring its performance right now to get a baseline for the average temp that we're seeing for our CPU. So we're showing right around 38 degrees Celsius for our temp averaging right around 38 as well. We peak so far at 39 degrees Celsius. And we'll talk about the GPU as well. I know this isn't cooling the GPU, but I'll show you in a minute when we fire everything up, we're gonna stress the CPU and the GPU to try to create the most heat 
possible in this case to see how the cooler does. Keep in mind, your results will vary depending on your configuration of your build. A lot of variables going into the airflow and cooling with how you're gonna have your setup. Maybe you have a beefier GPU, maybe you have no GPU, right? You get the idea. Maybe you have a couple exhaust fans, you name it. But anyways, with our particular build, we're seeing right around 38 degrees Celsius for our CPU at idle temps. And I should mention the CPU that we're using is the AMD 7700X. Now let's go ahead, let's stress this thing out and see how hot it gets. So this might not come as a surprise to most of you, but we're currently getting our 95 degrees Celsius as expected because with the 7000 series CPUs, it's going to go to that threshold regardless of the cooler that's on it. So you'll see some of our performance right here with our temps, but we're holding steady at 95 degrees Celsius. Our GPU you'll see is right around 60 degrees Celsius right there. So we're generating a lot of heat, stressing out both our CPU and our GPU. But let's just go ahead, let's run some more intensive programs and we'll see what the temps are and if we get anywhere close to 95 degrees Celsius. Now we have Cinebench R23 pulled up here. You'll see that we're utilizing our CPU at 100%. Again, we're at that 95 degree Celsius threshold. I wanna mention too at this point, everything stock, we have not changed or undervolted or done anything else. I wanted to give you guys real world measurements and samples of what you could expect with your build if you don't do any overclocking, underclocking, you name it. So with this setup, you'll see that we're getting close to five gigahertz still at our 95 degrees Celsius threshold. So I believe that's well within range because I think the base is 4.5 and maybe it boosts up to 5.4, but I'm sure a lot of that is just theoretical and probably doesn't actually equate to um, benchmarks like this. I think five gigahertz is really, really good with that cooler on there. For our previous stress test, we were getting about 4.7 gigahertz, so just keep that in mind, but still above the base, and we're stressing it at 100. And again, from my understanding, this is all well within range because it's designed to work up to that 95 degrees Celsius threshold, regardless of cooler, and then run continuously from there. So, so far, so good. Really happy with everything across the board. So now let me share with you my final thoughts after using this cooler. I really like how it looks. It's very quiet. I didn't point that out when we were testing everything super quiet even when our CPU is stressed under that max load and in regards to the TDP it's rated at 180 so hopefully that works with your CPU because I'm sure you're probably wondering if you don't have a 7700x will this work for my CPU just check your CPU TDP rating and compare it to the 180 that you get with this and you'll be all set and ready to go